it's almost like we would still be in living in caves if that happened. Well, that was the, that's the that thing, was right? the norm. <laughs> you know, you why build a home when I could live in a perfectly right? good piece of dirt? What's yeah. wrong with that? It's already made for me. <laughs> so, uh, when was the last time you got a product and uh, you opened it up and it was better than you could imagine it being, or, or worse, really? But you, better is the rarer one, I'd say. That doesn't really happen, actually. Yeah, yeah better would be know. something that doesn't happen so like, often. Man, you thought it was going to be good. You had all that anticipation, right? That's yeah. the problem, right? And you open it up, and it was actually better than that. Yeah. And also, what caused that? Like, what caused it to be better or worse than what you expected? Wow. You know? I guess it would have to be, first off, what were, were, what were you looking at when you purchased That's it? That's true, yeah. Where, where, what was your, you know, I'm assuming most people buy stuff. They don't, it's not in person. Usually it's on the well, internet yeah. based on pictures. So it's pictures. Things like yeah. that. And this is sort of an issue because what happens is, because of this fact, manufacturers are driven to make something that looks like what you want, and they market it in a way aligned with that. So you think you're getting what you want, but in reality, you get kind of like a cheaper picture of it in some extent. You're not you're getting a lower cost version of what you hope for, right? Nothing's made out of solid wood anymore. You buy a desk, it has a veneer or a laminate or something over it with the cheapest particle chipboard cardboard thing in between that they could get away with. It's a beauty of Photoshop, huh? Right, mm. but it looks fine. <laughs> right, and you it adjust works. the tone and the shading and- But it's a real do product. Some, do take a hundred, right? do a digital camera, take a thousand shots, pick the one that looks best, different angles, right? Unfortunately, you, you make, do get You that. can make something look pretty good, stellar on a photo. Good. Uh, you think about it. You can, and that's a serious issue because what happens is a lot of times manufacturers will take a photo of something that's hyper unrealistic and it doesn't really represent the product because the focus isn't on representing the product it's on delivering you what looks like what you want it's trying to trying to get you to buy the product right by by showing you the best possible light and i mean is that acceptable from a marketing standpoint it makes sense to do that you know i mean to yeah. you know show different angles whatever but is that misleading i mean cars are really hard no. to photograph well you know what is misleading though and <laughs> Yeah, this is an example that I we just ran into. You you know about it. Um, like on Amazon, you have like knockoff watch bands, Apple yeah. watch bands, and they use the actual Apple photo. So they're not right. even represented. Not even. So you're like, well, what does it actually look like though? Yeah, this right. one's eight dollars. Is it the same as this hundred dollar Apple? It's band like people or? that sell stuff on eBay or something eBay, like that. You're yes. selling a used product and they, they steal yeah. the photos they off the, the manufacturer's photo. website. Yeah. It's like, well, I don't want to see what you're selling, not what it looks like brand new. It's very common. Because <laughs> you know? I was looking for a replacement band for my watch. And the little bit that inserts into the watch area, the little nubby bit that slides in and snaps in, most of them are plastic. Because on this Apple, the actual one, this is uh, titanium. Yeah. Presumably, it's like an extrusion. It's relatively cost-effective to manufacture. But for a third-party company, it would be quite expensive, especially if you're selling the band for a couple dollars. So what they do is... They show you a picture of the legitimate Apple ones, and then maybe they mix a picture or two in of theirs, but usually it's just a stock photo from Apple or something like that. And then you get the product, and this little bit here is plastic, where it looks different than the photos. I've seen ones, I bought a few. I've seen ones that it looks plastic in the photo, but the style and the way the uh, the actual band intersects and is molded around it is different than the product you receive. Well, to, just to give an example, like we have this circa 1930, London phone booth sitting here, mm, right? It's a real full-size replica. Yeah, right. Now, if you took this and you had no reference, I wasn't standing next to it, and you photoed it, you could make it look like it was six feet tall. You could yeah. make it look like the yeah, original, right? Of. You put it with no background. There's could. nothing. There's no There's no size reference. You could take a photo of this, right? The door works, so you can actually open them and go, and let's step inside your phone booth. Yeah. And you can actually, well, okay, there's shelves in there, but <laughs> yeah. you could go in and you could, you could make this thing look like it was life-size, Right. And then and then sell it for a hundred bucks or whatever on e wherever right and go it's only a hundred dollars and you get it and it's two feet high hmm. <laughs> right. right some sellers and it's like, do oh that. I thought that was a full size phone booth and hmm. you know and I mean somewhere yeah. in the specs it probably says the size but you're thinking this thing's huge you know it'd be easy to do with photography what I see sometimes is you look at Amazon reviews um, people will list the dimensions the size in centimeters. And that seems like a rational thing to do, right? But a lot of Americans don't really pay attention to that, don't understand what that is, don't know how trivial it is to convert it, or don't focus on it. And they assume that Most the scale- Most people don't look at specs. That too. They, know, they assume weight. that the scale is representative of what the photos make it look like. And then they get it and they realize it's dramatically smaller 
than they thought it was going size, to be. I'd say size is one of the things where you'd be underwhelmed when you get something right. where you thought it was bigger. Yeah. That goes for steaks and everything. Well, <laughs> yeah. You, get, you order, you spend in $40, 50 for, for a meal and you get this like four ounce filet on it. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> what happened to the six ounces I ordered? But anyway, you know what I'm saying? Or the shrimp, the size of shrimp food tends to be like that where you get, it's a, you tend to be underwhelmed, especially in these days and ages. You know, when you go out to eat, you tend to be underwhelmed with the plate you get in front of you. You know, it's like, you're kidding me, right? <laughs> I just yes. spent twelve dollars on pancakes, and that's what you give me. <laughs> so, but yeah, so I could, you know, with food, I could see that. You know, it's same with uh, frozen dinners. Like, if, let's use that as an example. It's a bad, maybe a bad example, but they put a photo. You only got, they only got one photo to stick on well, that box, yeah. right? Yeah. And you have no idea what it looks like inside, other than the photo. Uh-huh. Looks pretty good on the package. You open it up, you got that plastic on mm. top. It's all frozen. It's like a, it's like it just came out the tundra somewhere in the, you know. <laughs> it's very common. It doesn't look like that even when well, it's nuked. <laughs> you should pretty much should expect that. Though. Yeah, right. You, know. you but, do, but yeah. you see, you accept that. Yeah, I guess. Right, yeah. because you know it ain't going to be that. Or the commercials for the chains, like Burger King and McDonald's, when they show a Whopper this yeah. big. The Whoppers ain't that big. No day, no win, no how, no. <laughs> they are like that. There's a legitimate you know? discussion here, though, right? So the question is, if you're designing a thing, how good should it be? Should you make it the way it should be? Because you see people saying this. People say, well, it, sh- it should be made properly. It should be made this way. You should make it in a way that's durable. Or it shouldn't break. Right. This shouldn't break. However, that shouldn't happen. This should be that. The reality is, you know, yeah. more often than not, to design something this proper way costs more. To manufacture it that way costs a lot more a lot of times. And that's why in North America, we so commonly have things like hollow cord interior doors. They're basically cardboard with like little cardboard supports corrugated inside there. And yeah, you so could, the, bedroom you door, the bedroom doors are hollow. Right. They don't have to be. You could spec higher doors, but the difference that's is the standard. <laughs> people will complain, well, your American homes are built out of paper. I don't, I'm surprised they don't just fall over. And to some extent, they're kind of true. Or I guess they're right in saying that. But the reality is the reason why they're made like that isn't because that's the way people want them to be made. It's because they don't know any better. They don't care. It serves the bare minimum required legal function, and it costs more to make it better. It's a door with right? a knob. Hmm. So the concern is, as a like a designer perspective, I guess, how good do you make it? And that's a serious issue because the better you make it, the more it costs. Yeah, well, right. How much more is it when it, if it was made of solid wood? What's it worth to the much, consumer? Much, much more. How much more difficult it is to install when you buy a door right. of that caliber? So now we're talking about labor. Yeah. What about the hardware? Now the hardware because the door is three, four, five times heavier now the hardware has to mm-hmm. be beefier so now you need more expensive hardware so it's not only just about the door <laughs> it's about the whole now the how whole many system. how many doors yeah. are in a home you'd be surprised when you count how many doors you got in your house well yeah there's a lot of freaking doors in a house so now and do you even really want a solid so now door? you're multiplying the cost of the doors by that that's the multiplier if there's 15 doors in the house and you spend another 300 hours a door to the to the builder Wow. <laughs> you know? Yeah, $300 wouldn't yeah. be that yeah. much. And the question is, would the buyer recognize that as being valid? Would they care? Right. And a lot of times, a white door to people is a white door. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if it's hollow or solid or whatever. Because the standard builder gray doors, as they call them, they're $60, $70 for the whole door, pre-hung hinges, ready to run, right? Yeah, Whereas pre, being pre-hung You get an MDF too. door, a yeah, right. few hundred dollars. <laughs> and if, yeah. you're talking about, if you're talking about solid hardwood that isn't just veneered, they're Maybe two thousand, three, four, five thousand, depending on your woods. They're obscenely more yeah, expensive. There's quite a spread. They're not even close. So we're talking about sixty, eighty dollars. See, to that's two, the thing. Three thousand. That's the thing. Now you look at a photograph or even a video. Yeah. Right. You say they could look similar. And you you go even with video going through the whole house, and let's say that you know the, the, the doors look nice. They're painted well. They're surfaced well. Sure. Whatever. And would you know the difference well, by looking at it? What you'd have to you hear one close. Yeah, but that, you can't right. hear it in the picture. <laughs> well, if it was right. a video, and in, right. and then in, then let's take that even further. Even even if you were at the door yourself, would you know the difference? Would you Doesn't care? Matter. Some, Is it worth paying some for? people do and some people don't? You well, know? you might notice, but it might be like. So now let's now let's even take that further. Now I'm thinking about it. let's make that a retail setting. Let's say a home is a retail setting, and every door is different, mm-hmm. and then you put a price on each door. This one's fifty bucks. Mm. This one's five hundred. This one's five thousand. This one's ten thousand. Which door would you pick? Hmm. Like a model home. Yeah, and it has everything's different. Yeah. You, so you, you go around and pick what you. So want. the question is, yeah. <laughs> now the question is, which you know, are you going to pick the hollow door for your bedroom? Maybe because hmm. it's fifty bucks. 
times how many bedroom doors you got in a closet doors versus 500 is the next choice where you just get into a solid, you know, more labor to put it in, got to butt the hinges and all right. more involved with it. All right. But then people say, well, Jesus, why is it $500? It's a door either way. Why am I paying $500? Well, there's that underlying stuff that's going on. The infrastructure. <laughs> it's not just about the chunk of wood it's made of. Right. Yeah. And so that's sort of our dilemma because if you're already making something that's expensive, there's always that incentive, that edge to be like, well, let's just do it the right way. Where the expectation is that you do it the right way. Trouble is that does drive cost. So what happens a lot of times is you see manufacturers making, selling high-end products. And the choices they made along the way may not be exactly the ones you would have made. There's tens of thousands of choices in any There's so particular many. product. But the reality is these choices have to be made. And you need to pick, more often than not, a singular option. Because in headphones, you really can't have like the same thing in different grades. It's just it's too unreasonable, too expensive and problematic. Same People with the are, electronics for the headphones. It barely works, right? It doesn't yeah. work as well as doors, where maybe you could have three, four, five options in doors. Maybe there's enough scale that that makes sense. But you got to imagine the five thousand dollar doors. Well, that's why you buying. see so many companies that make headphones or electronics, yeah. right? Is because each one of them's got to differentiate themselves. If everyone, if there were two hundred companies making headphones, which there are, right, mm -hmm. and At every least. one of them in a price point had the same headphone, what? Sets why them apart. Then, yeah. yeah. Why do you need 200 companies making headphones? You know, and it's funny because you see that argument with a lot of stuff. You know, they're like, well, you know, why not just have one thing? Why not have just one car or one whatever? Mm -hmm. You know, why do we need all these selection? And, and I, I think because there's a demand for it. I mean, right? I mean, people are. Is that not better? Somebody's buying it. If it's being made, <laughs> somebody must be buying it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be made. Not always, but yeah. Well, well, yeah. Okay. You hope for so. the, the most majority part. of yeah, it. Yeah. yeah. If you look at the long term for products out right. there, if whatever it, stays it is, available, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if it should disappears, there's a reason for that too. I remember years ago. I remember I was at the some store and it was like a dollar years ago, and they had silicone wiper blades in the store. Hmm. And I never saw silicone white boys before. You always get the rubber, and they wear out in a year. Mm -hmm. You know, the name brands like the Trico that used to be here in Buffalo, they used to build make wiper yep. blades, right? Mm -hmm. These things would wear out in a year, and every year you're buying white blades. Mm -hmm. And nowadays it's a it's a fortune to buy some wiper blades now. And it was cheaper then. But the point yeah, the ridiculous. point was is I bought these silicone wiper blades, which I'm thinking, that sounds cool. Silicone would be durable. It, the packaging says it leaves a layer of silicone on the window, which mm. keeps water from, makes the water bead. Uh -huh. All this good shit on this thing. And I was like, why is this only a buck or two, right? So I get them, I put them on, right? First wipe, sucked. Just yeah. didn't, what didn't mesh to the windshield, streaking, lines. I'm like, oh. <laughs> That's why they're in the dollar store, because mm -hmm. they made the product and it flopped. It didn't serve. It didn't its, work. It didn't serve its only function. Yeah. It on paper it sounded great. What right. it was made of, it looked good, all that stuff, and then it didn't work. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> crazy factor. when you think about it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Flopped. When you make a thing, it's not only how it's made. It still you hope needs to work. So ideally, you find this balance where it's made great, it's robust, it's reliable, it's durable, and it works. But Interestingly, you see this a lot in cars now, especially because prices have continued to go up for various reasons. And manufacturers don't want to make an expensive thing because they know it doesn't sell, right? It's much easier to make a cheap thing and sell it. And it's much easier to make money and making a cheap thing. Yeah. It's way harder to make money making an expensive thing. So everybody wants to make their product as cheap as possible. But well, the trouble is, yeah. people complain. They say, oh, why is it made this way? It shouldn't be made this way. You should do it this way. You used to make it like this. And they're always comparing things. Well, that is true. Wipers are a good example, and because uh, like Walmart, when I like my first car, I would get like the two dollar. They literally sold like two dollar wiper yeah, right, blades. Yeah. They don't anymore. The yeah. cheapest wiper blades like sixteen, seventeen dollars right. now. They don't even have the low end stuff. Because so. it sucks. Yeah. Is that because nobody's buying it anymore? I guess. I don't even last two months. Yeah, they if must just worked, last if a if month or two. It even worked out the box. Yeah, they would just rip apart. Yeah. You know, I mean, so, it depends, especially in the winter around here when you're dealing well, with winter, ice and yeah. shit. It can be brutal. I mean, it could freeze the windshield. You go to pick it up and yeah. you rip the rubber right off the, <laughs> off the thing. Yeah. So it's got to be durable, you know, in that in that, in that that application, uh, especially around here. Maybe if you're in Florida, then you got to deal with heat. Right. It's like, you know, will it melt your windshield before it, you know, before it gets to past a month old, you know. But but actually now I, I do have silicone wiper blades They're made by Michelin. And I don't like them. No. They're louder than that. I saw they came out with silicone again. Yeah. I haven't. I haven't. They're seen the them. higher I've end. I've never ones. seen them. They're they're supposed to be higher durability. Yeah. 
but they're louder. They get like, you know, they're uh, yeah. like, sometimes, you know. It's See, like, even yeah. they flopped. And they know what they're doing, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean it's Michelin. Yeah. yeah. You'd think they know what they're doing. Yeah. So I guess the question is, how good is good enough? Because commonly, especially in the headphone industry, people use marketing to conceal the construction. They'll say, oh, look, it's metal. But what they mean is there's metal covering an element that's it's not metalized. structural. It's metalized. Yeah, or it's a metalized plastic, oh, again, laptops, right? Because yeah. the reality is at that price, you cannot make, can't afford to make the product. So, so they make it look like metal, you mean? Right. But so it really isn't like a solid. Yeah. yeah. But in your mind, as the purchaser, you're looking at this thing and saying, oh, it's metal. That means it's durable. Mm. They didn't say it was durable. They said it was metal, which they are two separate things, right? right? You could make it not durable at all and made out of metal. Yeah, three-foot drop test will tell you right away. <laughs> well, depends how it's made. <laughs> yeah, right. Because almost every time, to do it the right way, it costs more. It's expensive. It could be very expensive. Well, the perfect example is remember in like 2008 when Apple first came out with the unibody MacBooks? Yeah. And everybody in the industry was like, they can't be, because they all knew that would be ridiculously expensive. So everybody's like, they're not doing that. And then they did. And everybody's like, oh. And it took everybody so long to actually right. make a product to compete against it because it was hard to do, obviously, and make it In feasible. volume, for yeah. sure, because you have to have... All those machines got to be set up to make that. It's one incredibly part. difficult to do that. Um, it only really works for a company like Apple that pretty much exclusively sells high margin, high price products. However, it's great to see something like that now, from my perspective, because it means well, now it set the, rest, the bar higher. It did, and so now the rest of the industry, you still have the cheaper stuff, cheaper yeah, than ever. Plastic right. is plastic. But other people are competing to make similarly manufactured goods. They're making machined laptops, and they're not all creaky. Well, yeah, and cracky. that's the thing, right? At a certain price point, you ex now people you, you expect, expect that. It. Yeah. You expect and more. And it didn't exist prior to that. Right. Being that be prior to that product existing, we would still have plastic laptops, probably. Because yeah. why not? That's easy. Why not? Why? Why would you? What? Why would you bother? Well, how do you go? It? Rock the boat? No, sure. <laughs> Upset the apple cart? Well, like we were Why change about a perfectly good way of making things? <laughs> What's the purpose of your business taking the financial risk to set up? And we could be talking about hundreds of millions of dollars to tool for something like this in some cases, if you're actually making it yourself. Mm, wow. In quantity. Yeah, or if you're actually paying some subsidies to another vendor to make it. Or even on a smaller yeah. scale, like a company like ours. I mean, you're talking a lot of money to scale Huge up money. to make something. If you're going to do it in-house and do the machines and stuff, have the machine. Or... So why would you take that risk when you could just not and just make it out of plastic at a fifth the price, yeah. a tenth, a twentieth the price? It's simple. It's way easier. It's cheaper. You, you design a part. You farm it out. Let someone else injection mold it. All you got to do is snap it together and, and stick it in a box. do you have to take the risk? And mm -hmm. that's the trouble. That's the reality. So I think we fall in a precarious position yeah. where we're, we're trying to make products that are manufactured in a way that we think is the right way. And the reality is it costs more to make. Right. Oh, they're solid, a that's for sure. More. Like, it's, not, yeah. it's not 2% more, it's dramatically it, more. It, it right? is pretty ridiculous. <laughs> and so the, the, the point is, I think, to try to leverage these processes to be able to make a stellarly manufactured product at the lowest price possible, that's always the goal, but it does cost more. So it's not going to be 10 bucks or something like that, but the hope is that maybe it pushes other people to do the same and yep. you see better product. You have a wider range, right? And we're seeing this to some extent. We're seeing cheaper products than ever that are better than ever. There's example. There's products. examples of this that go back in time. You name it. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter what yeah, it it's is. It's always been like that. You know, if somebody yeah. doesn't push the envelope, no one will. Because why much. bother? Why bother? It goes with everything. Look at look at the uh, the SpaceX. If nobody well, yeah, pushed right. that envelope, we'd well, still yeah. be freaking crawling. Well, everybody's been saying it was impossible to the day it they landed their first one. People were saying yeah. it wasn't possible. And even right? a little after that, too. That's right. yeah. But now nobody says that. And that's yes, really interesting if you ask me. Well, now it's the norm for them. It's well, the yeah, norm. for them. Still, I haven't seen anyone else do it. Nobody else has done they it. They had yeah. so much negativity. Yeah. There was, I mean, you had like Gene Cern. To, well, that's, that you know, that's you actually, the, that's the topic there is like why, you know, maybe maybe people can comment in our, uh, on this is like, why are people negative about things that don't, that don't exist? Why, why is something exist, new... So. Something potentially new, whether it be yeah. an idea, concept, or the actual reality. Why is it of, always bad? Why is it always a negative? Yeah. 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 There's like, can't do that. No way. It's going to suck. It's too expensive. And, and then it's done. Yeah, right. Then it, it actually happens. Then it's normal. Yeah. And, and I guess what, what people don't realize. But how quickly it turns around then. 
to. Oh yeah. wow, well, of course. Well, it that's already, the thing. You know, it's, it's like, like why, later, why, but... why all the negativity on on something new like that? Why, why do people disbelieve that it's possible? It's almost like we would still be in living in caves if that happened. Well, if that was the, that's if the that thing, was right? the norm. <laughs> you know, you why build a home when I could live in a perfectly right? good piece of dirt? What's yeah. wrong with that? It's already made for me. <laughs> you know? Yeah, why I not just sh- live in this shed or a tent yeah, or something? Why not shit in a hole in the ground? Why? Who needs a toilet? Right? Well, yeah. you just dig a hole and go there until it's full. Right. That's but what that's people the used reality. to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think people fail to understand. I think people think that's like that type of statement is a joke, but it really truly isn't it's in a lot of true ways. With everything, because the reality is, although maybe it's funny now. There's almost always a time where people say these things. Oh, we shouldn't do that because what we have now works. Okay, but why don't we try it this way? Maybe it's better. Maybe it isn't. And if it isn't better, we won't do it, right? I, I but, picture like the West, the well, Westerns. Yeah, yeah. but there, the other thing is, is then once it is proven that it can be done, everybody's always like, oh, well, someone else will come yeah. in and crush it, do it way cheaper. <laughs> and then that never happens. Right? There's always some negative yeah. side to yeah, these right. things. Always negative. Yeah, it's always. weird. Why is that? I mean, some, maybe there's probably some people out there who are psychiatrists right. who could tell us what the technical term is, you know. But it's funny. I think of like times like people lived in the Old West and that, there was a lot. There had a, there was a lot to be desired when you lived in the old, you are talking about 1800s. Well, yeah, yeah. You were on horses. There were no roads. It was all dirt. You were you were just cities. They didn't exist. Right. You, when you went somewhere, you, you you stuck a stake in the ground and you figured out how to build a structure to live inside of. Nothing existed. And when you think about that, it's crazy about how life was basic tough. life was, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, water was yeah, dark. That, yeah. I mean, it didn't have filtered water. It didn't have anything. It didn't have anything. It didn't have anywhere, nothing. You, you, were, you, were, you lived off the land, you know? You, you had to start farming to get vegetables. And it's crazy when and you think the about that. And the weather wasn't bad that There was year. no tech to it. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, you know, and it's just think about, I wonder if people were negative back then. Was, oh, oh yeah, probably, probably the, the same, same deal. Same you thing, you yeah. can't grow corn there. It ain't yeah. going to happen. Right. Won't work, you know. The interesting or, thing is it's always, been, always been like that. Yeah. People change almost like a light switch. Once it's proven, people go, well, of course, I've always said you could do it that way. Of course, that's the better way to do it. Yeah. Always. Like you see, curiously enough, Crazy. people ask uh, to like ESA on their live streams, European States Agency. Why isn't their new rocket going to be reusable and things like that? Right. And they come, they have to come up with an answer. But the reality is their answer is because we can't. We don't know how to do it, most yeah. likely. Yeah. It's too expensive. It's not worth the, right the investment. Answer. They don't say that. Well, of course. they're probably currently working on something that they still haven't even finished yet right. that was never designed for that. So they have to throw that out and then build a whole new But thing. it's an interesting <laughs> view because it went from they shouldn't even try to make a reusable rocket. That's stupid. That's what people were saying. Oh, it's too dangerous to do it that way. They did it. They prove it. It works. And now people go, why isn't everyone doing it like this? <laughs> well, yeah. But I mean, yeah, 1800s, horses uh, and everything. When cars came around, people, they were like, oh, that's stupid. I'm going right. to stick with it was that the same horse. Deal. Same thing. Yeah, right. right? Yep. And then a new thing comes out and it, it gets proven to people. Or pedal my bicycle. Of a doubt. Mm. 10, 20 years go by, people see it over and over working and they go, oh, well, that's better. I never said it wasn't better. Mm. Of course it's better. And then it just overnight, everyone switches. Well, one thing that cell phones did is. You don't need boxes like this anymore around town. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be phone booths all over the place that you had to put change well, in to make a call. Well, that's nobody change anymore either. Yeah, so. right. That, well, it obliviated <laughs> the need for change because really the only need to carry it was, yeah. well, a, a, that was pre, pre-popularity of credit cards too. Well, yeah. right? You needed to buy things with most people paid cash. But yeah, you couldn't communicate without a quarter or a dime or, or a yeah. nickel, I think it started at. You couldn't what even communicate without having carrying some of that in your pocket. Well, it seems like yeah. that also killed the whole uh, gumball industry. Yeah, right. Like, that doesn't True. exist anymore. Yeah, right? no. The no. only thing that survived was They the, tried to yeah, hang on. Well, yeah, they tried. But it was all stale. <laughs> they put the, um, the, the credit card readers on... Uh, like uh, yeah, right. Vending look, machines, yeah, like a yeah. Coke machine, and they don't work half the time because yeah, they so. got to they got to communicate with the, on the internet. Yeah, it's got to so. really be having some unintended consequences like that. But I guess it is what it is. You got to adapt yeah. and change, figure out a new way. But that's true. That's there's a topic there. Hmm. Did did the 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 lack of need for phone boots right obviate other industries? That required change. Probably did. Probably. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. it wasn't a necessity coins. to have quarters in your pocket. Yeah, yeah. right. Because so I mean, back in the day, I mean, I you guys were, it was before you, but I you had to you had to, you usually carried a quarter so you could call somebody. Hmm. Usually had something, otherwise you were pretty screwed. Well, you could always ask 
the, the operator to do a collect call. Right. Yeah. And the person out there would have to be there to answer it. Yeah. And say, okay. Oh, you gave yeah. us uh, like phone cards before. Oh, you yeah. That's true. You call, you call a number and you call another number, then you call the real number or oh, something. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. did a yeah. few calls. When you were in calls. school. Yeah, when yeah. in high school. Or call, and then you yeah. got a cell phone. Gave you the ability to not, have, <laughs> not need change. Because it was yeah. a serious issue. And today, you it's, couldn't communicate. I think it's hard to grasp what that meant. But you would just be standing somewhere. There's a phone. There's people around you. There is no way to contact anyone you know yeah. well, without you having did, money well, to pay for a phone. It's even worse. You need or to remember music. numbers back then. Yeah, that's true. You, you, know need, you couldn't just be like, yeah. call my mom. Yeah, right. They don't know who that is. <laughs> right. Yeah, they don't know who you <laughs> hey, are. Siri. Right? <laughs> well, yeah. So it was, there was a lot of I mean, problems. Maybe you go to like a random public building and hope that they'll let you use their phone or Speaking something. Speaking of Siri, did you see that? I just saw caught a video yesterday. What's his name? Uh, MKBHD did a uh, thing on the new speaker. The, yeah, HomePod. I yeah. watched it, yeah. And he basically said it's the same as the old home. Yeah. <laughs> Why even well, bother type it thing? Yeah. Yeah, kind of funny when you bucks. think about it. Yeah, yeah. price went down. Yeah. It's a great product, but it's too expensive for the average consumer. Yeah. I still got the first one. I still haven't figured out what to do with it. Mm. The only thing I really use it for is ask what the temperature is. Uh, just like he, That's what he yeah. did. Yeah. 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 And until I subscribed to Apple Music, I couldn't play music music on it either. I, that's I right. got music yeah. all over the house, but I couldn't play it because it only only played Apple music. That's right. <laughs> Every time I ask it a question, it says, I can't get the answer to that on HomePod right that's now. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a shame. It really is. You know, it's a shame. I miss Steve. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anyway, yeah, we should I probably think we're get going. Off. Yeah, mm -hmm. just a bit. Mm -hmm. um, thank you everyone for watching. Subscribe, please. We got more stuff coming. And uh, oh, by the way, we forgot to tell you, it's Italy. We're in Italy today. Oh, yeah, we forgot Italy. all about that. Thanks, guys. Take care.